Hi, this is Aaron from Sibling Rivalry, and today I wanted to show you guys my thrift store haul from the other day. Keep your camera ready. You'll get the kind of picture only you can take. So, uh, in case I haven't mentioned it in the past, something that Val and I like to do is go to different thrift stores in our area and being in Scarborough and Toronto there are quite a few thrift stores we've got like three or four value villages within a short distance like relatively short distance some Salvation Armies and National Thrift and a few other smaller thrift stores and uh, we like going because you can always find something generally speaking there's been the odd bust but we tend to find all sorts of like little hidden treasures or even new products that are untouched, like this stamp kit here, or if you've seen our advent calendar video, the Lego advent calendar was actually a value village find. We found it completely unopened, uh, like in really freaking good shape at a value village. So uh, as I get started here, I just wanna give you guys some tips and tricks that we've kind of developed over the last few years of thrifting. So, to start out, I'm going to show you this cool camera that I got, which there's actually a story behind this. So, this is a Lomography uh, Fisheye 2 camera. This normally would retail for around $80 or $90 Canadian. Um, you can get it on a variety of different stores. The price can go up or down depending on where you're getting it. Uh, this is like practically brand new. There's a few little blemishes and stuff that I'll just clean up with a probably just a damp cloth. Um, but it's practically brand new. It just doesn't have the original packaging. So uh, how we found this. So when Val and I go thrifting, the goal is that there's two of us. So we both look at different things while we're there and we kind of point stuff out to each other joke around play around while we're doing like while we're thrifting and in this case i saw something red out of the corner of my eye and i just kind of ignored it because it looked like a cheap plasticky thing val pointed it out that it was this camera and i took a closer look at it realized what it was because i'm a fan of lomography uh, they make some really cool experimental cameras and initially i didn't think i was going to get it we uh, set it back and I was like, oh, well, I don't really have a use for it. It's kind of, uh, I don't really like fisheye effects. And we went and continued the rest of our uh, visit to the Value Village. And on our way out, Val was like, well, how much does it sell for? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's probably like, I know my little uh, Diana camera was like, 50 bucks and these guys are usually like 80 or 90 bucks Canadian so then we're like oh crap we should go find it <laughs> and grab it and maybe we can try and resell it and make a bit of a profit uh, you know, essentially pay for the rest of the fines so uh, we've actually got this listed on Poshmark we might put a link for that if you're interested in this um, but I ended up going back in the thrift store after we checked out and I was running all over the place trying to find it. And this is where the, uh, the partnership part comes into play. So I freaked out, couldn't find it because it wasn't in the original spot. Didn't think to look anywhere else. So I ran out, grabbed Val and said, hey, I don't know where it is. Can I bring you in and we'll do an extra pass and see if we can find it? So we did that and then on our way through, we looked like pretty much everything scoured, everything in the store. And then on the way out, we noticed that someone had picked it up and moved it and just put it with other relatively colored things, which ended up being sunglasses. They've got a big selection of sunglasses that are kind of plasticky looking. Um, this guy is actually metal, if you're not aware, um, but it does have that sort of plasticky effect because it's got the nice uh, powder coating on it. Which brings me to another point. So when you're thrifting, be it at a thrift store or even a retail store like uh, Marshalls or HomeSense or anything like that where it's kind of got a weird selection of stuff and a mix match. Always look everywhere. 
like scour everything. Like even if you're going into the store and not looking for books, you want to have an open mind. So you want to look everywhere because when you think about it, people go into these stores, they pick up an item, and this happens in regular retail as well. People pick up an item and they'll think about it as they're walking around and then they might decide they don't want it or they get distracted and set it down somewhere. Like we've noticed this a few times. There's been cameras in, sitting in teacups or like sitting in buckets and like in random places. I personally like to collect cameras, so that's like my example, but there's been a few other things. We've found like phone accessories. We found these really nice uh, bento boxes that we we're like obsessed with. Yeah, one was in one department, like, and one was in the whole other side of the store. One was in toys, one was with food. And if we hadn't have just scoured through everything, we wouldn't have found the second one and we would have only had one. And we weren't even sure at that point if we wanted just one. So we ended up getting two of these double stack bento box. Always keep an eye out and always look everywhere. Like, don't be afraid to look in other places or even do multiple passes. Um, which brings us to, I, I love this camera, but uh, I'm actually gonna talk about this. So this is a stamp making kit that we're actually gonna probably do a video with. And what it does essentially, you're carving a lino block. And this is, other than the box, which is mostly just my fault that it's beaten up because I was freaking out and trying to cram it into a backpack. Um, it was in perfect condition when we first found it but it's a lino block carving kit. The ink pad has remained unopened, it's still in the original wrapping. Everything's the original packaging, comes with a pencil. It's actually surprisingly still sharp. Um, and the carving tool. So one of these kits would probably be like 40, 50 bucks at uh, like Michael's or somewhere similar. Um, you could probably order like a cheap Chinese knockoff online or buy the components yourself. Realistically, you could just buy some linoleum and use an X-Acto knife, but this has the proper gouges and attachments. And it comes with a whole bunch of patterns, like a whole bunch of patterns. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to use this for our Etsy shop, make some uh, koala and bee stamps and we're gonna start stamping our boxes with it as our signature rather than using vinyl. We only paid $3.99 if you didn't see the price on this. Um, so that's like a great deal. And like, this is just like the, uh, the Lego I was talking about earlier. We found a few Lego kits over the years. Yeah, we bought a $40 Lego advent calendar for $2.99. I happened to stumble upon a box of, uh, Minecraft Lego that was $7.99 and it's like a $80 kit and it was still like everything was in the box. Yeah, it's pretty much brand new. It looked like someone opened the bags and then dumped them into a Ziploc and like everything was untouched. So that's, yeah. Bringing this kind of more to a point, uh, check every department again. Like this we found in the toys section which you would normally think it would be in like the arts and crafts. Usually they've got like a quilting and knitting department. Um, but it was in the toys, I guess, because they've got like bright colors on the box and everything. So someone was just like, oh, it's a toy. It's a box. It's a kit. Because like they'll have like the kids science kits and stuff like that, which we've actually found some pretty cool kits that you can reuse stuff for. So think outside of the box when it comes to this stuff. And the great thing about bringing another person with you is that you have someone else, some, yeah, as a sounding board and someone else's box to think outside of, so to speak. So like there's been multiple times where Val and I have like seen something and I'm like, oh, it's just a cheap little kit. And then Val's like, well, couldn't you reuse this part for this and do this? And like, and then we've got like something that we've both been looking for and we realize we can make it for a few bucks. Now on to the cameras. <laughs> so I, you've probably seen my uh, original video. I think it was like our second video that we ever did was the, uh, the brownie and the film development. So we'll have a link somewhere around here. Um, gotta move the hands around so you get full coverage. 
these are all actually in the same family of camera. So this guy is a like the step up from my brownie. It has a focus uh, lens on there and it's got a viewfinder for both landscape and portrait and it's in really freaking good shape. Like there's a bit of oxidization on this faceplate but I imagine I can probably clean this up and we're going to do a video of me, probably one video each of these uh, doing restorations because as you can see on this guy there's a part missing from the top and there's some wear and I kind of want to see if I can clean the uh, prisms on these because they get a bit of flex of stuff in them over the years. And these are old cameras. This is 1930s, which I know someone's probably like, that's not old, but it uh, is a 616. And I believe it takes uh, the same type of film as my previous guy, but let me just check to make sure. It might take a slightly larger film. Okay, the other guy was 620. This takes a 616, but it should be cross compatible because the great thing about these cameras there's very few parts and it's really, it's just a box and a shutter. Yeah, it's like a step up from a pinhole camera. Literally, the shutter is literally just a little hole with this lens. And let's see if we can, I know I showed this in the previous video with this. I'm just gonna pull out this exposure tab and flip that and you can see the actual oculus in there and this is great like the things you can do with this and there's a couple other focus pulls and stuff like that and there's actually quite a few good resources on adapting modern films for this so I'm gonna do a few uh, videos with this I'm gonna do a restoration gonna maybe do an adaptation for modern film and then do some development. And I've actually been doing some research and I might even spin my own film a little bit, so to speak. So, yeah. Um, now, next on the list is this more iconic looking Brownie Hawkeye, which is all Bakelite. So there's a, I can't say all Bakelite, there's actually a metal interior. It has this lever on the top, which opens up and there's some metal spools and stuff like that this is just takes a regular 620 and a cool thing about these that I noticed as we were prepping for the video is all three of these cameras were built in Toronto so these are all local and probably have all sorts of history to them who knows what sort of things people photographed with them probably lots of uh, <laughs> if you get to my drift <laughs> so yeah, selfies, so to speak. And this has a cool long exposure tab that's kind of integrated into the shell so it doesn't stick out. I know a lot of reporters back in the days, you see like old pictures, which pictures of cameras is a kind of a weird niche thing when you think about it. But uh, yeah, you see a lot of reporters with this because you could just walk up, take a shot, and it has a few cool features, and sorry if I'm geeking out about this. The, uh, the viewfinder is actually a refined crystal compared to the previous ones. The uh, window is in the center. It's a separate little plastic insert. Um, the film feeder is actually a one-way mechanism, so you can't turn it the other way. So you, can't, you don't have to worry about accidentally unspooling your film and messing up your pictures and your timing and everything. And yeah, like this is just, I think this is a beautiful little camera. It actually has an, a uh, socket here for a flash as well. So you can add that in and you'll see pictures of these. I paid uh, 20 bucks for this guy, which is a, a little pricey, but I mean, considering if I were to buy it from like a collector or an antique shop, I'd probably pay like four times that. And the value of it, if it's restored, is probably gonna be quite a bit higher. Um, this guy was $14.99 and now coming to, I don't know, Val's just telling me that this guy on eBay regularly goes for 80 bucks. So awesome deal. <laughs> and I've been kind of eyeing all these different Hawkeyes after I got the first one. 
and uh, apparently this guy, the little starlet Hawkeye, was 70 bucks. So this guy, yeah, on eBay, um, I paid $14.99. And this guy is awesome. <laughs> I just, I'm smitten with this. Um, it's got a socket for a flash on the side here. It has a actual glass lens and glass viewfinder, like a straight through viewfinder. Same sort of viewing window on the back as the Bakelite model. I think they're both Bakelite actually. Again, made by Canadian Kodak Co. Limited in Toronto. It has a actual ratchet feeding mechanism, which let's see if we can get that sound on there. It's kind of satisfying. And the shutter actually has a lock on it, so you can't engage the shutter if you haven't wound the film. So it's meant for doing like single shot or long exposure. And uh, it has this little tab in the front here that you can push in like it's a little keyway and it slides the oculus out of the way so you can do 13 colors what it's called or 13 uh, film which is color and then black and white. So the black and white has a smaller oculus I believe that's the correct term, and the color has a larger one because the color needs more light to pass through. So we'll see if we can get that up close. Let's see if we can see the uh, little Oculus switching in there. It's so cool. Uh, normally this has a little star, like a little uh, debossed star on the top here. I'm going to look into different ways of replacing that. Um, now on the inside, let's open this guy up. It just takes a cartridge almost, like it the whole thing comes out as a cartridge. There's the shutter mechanism on the inside and it works together. And the cool thing about this, you can realistically, if you uh, cover the little view hole here, just use 35 millimeter film. So like standard photo film in this, the cartridge fits. You just have to manually feed it onto this a little bit, which you can do the feed while it's in there. And it's got the uptake reel. The great thing about all of these, and from what I've seen online, this is kind of a more difficult thing to find with a lot of uh, cameras at thrift stores. This actually came with all of the uh, uptake reels or intake reels. So that is like a big win for me because it means I don't have to worry about like 3D printing or manufacturing or purchasing these little reels, which are all solid metal, like honestly, just the detail in all of these. I know there's people out there who are like, yeah, 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 it's cool, but whatevs. Honestly, I think this thing is like freaking just amazing. I just look at all the different bits to it and the manufacturing for the time. This is 1947, I want to say. So like the quality of the manufacturing in here looks almost like it was made today. It's just amazing. <laughs> like if I didn't know any better, I would say that this is literally someone just made a bootleg or made a modern version of it, which maybe they did. Hey, maybe I'm just like bad at identifying cameras, but honestly, it's gorgeous. And we're gonna do, yeah, again, some uh, cleaning videos or like restore and uh, do some photos, see how they turn out, especially with the developer. Um, I'll have to buy some black and white film, so that'll be next on the uh, Amazon purchase. But uh, if, like if you've seen our previous video, we're surprised how well it did. It was kind of just a culmination of a lot of things. Unfortunately, the, uh, the Photoshop's nearby um, within a reasonable distance for me to go uh, just it's too expensive to buy like they they'd have to order in black and white film which I can just order on Amazon for like next to nothing um, there's a place downtown Toronto that I could go to to get it but getting down there my carbon footprint is just as bad as ordering it from Amazon so it kind of sucks yeah they're getting it from Amazon or they're selling it on Amazon so I know the last uh, roll of black and white that I bought, a 35 millimeter, was from the place downtown selling it through Amazon for cheaper than they sell it themselves. So, 
yeah, I don't know. It's just, I guess that's just uh, economics, but uh, yeah. So this guy, I'll actually go into a little more detail because I realize I didn't actually cover that. So it has a, uh, a hot shoe for a flash. It comes with a little viewfinder that gives you a similar effect to what the lens is supposed to do. So everything's fisheye. I'm actually liking fisheye more and more. <laughs> I, I used to hate fisheye effects, but uh, yeah, like it's in like perfect shape. Other than like there's, it looks like a little bit of grime in the uh, the feed wheel here. Yeah, it's probably from being in Value Village and being fondled by like everyone. Um, it takes a 35 millimeter. Uh, you can use whatever type of uh, 35 millimeter you want. The cool thing about Lomography is they actually produce a lot of their own films or they'll produce small production films. And uh, yeah, it's got a little knob on the top here for long exposure, burst, and uh, end, which I'm not sure what that is. But there's the flash, so it works. Uh, I just threw a battery in it the other night to make sure that everything worked fine. Um, it's got a manual feed for uh, returning the film, the uh, the spool, blah, 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 the film back to the spool, and it's got a nice little touch there. I just realized the little uh, knobby bit on the uh, crank is actually a floating little wheel, so like it's like an actual knob that floats rather than just a plastic nub. So, yeah. I'll definitely, before we sell this, I'll definitely have to take a few pictures with it and see what it turns out like. Um, the whole thing with Lomography is that they make their own cameras and they're usually either reproductions or they're uh, just kind of, they've purchased the tooling to make the cameras that uh, they're usually like what would be considered like a throwaway camera or something like that. And it's all about experimental photography, which is something that a lot of people are opening up to. I know a lot of people are like opposed to it with photography, like the whole concept of, oh, if you're taking a picture, you have to take the picture perfectly and it has to be beautiful, which is like kind of Val's mindset. I was actually looking at getting her one of these to kind of help her uh, express herself artistically because she kind of felt a bit challenged with that this past year. But uh, when I ran the idea by her, she was like, no, I just use my phone and then I've got my, she's got an Instax mini printer. Um, so she just does that and then prints it out. So, which is fine. You can do your own artistic effects on your phone. I'm not judging anyone who does that, but I like, personally for me, I like kind of mucking around with film and doing all this stuff. It's a whole experience for me. And I, I like the look of film a lot of times, the little imperfections it gives and that's why I'm a camera nut, kind of. There were a few other cameras that I wish I had have grabbed, but I couldn't justify them. I was already paying, what, like 40 bucks for cameras. Um, <laughs> this guy was like, what, three, three or four bucks, I think? Maybe five. 499, yeah. I remember thinking like, for less than a fiver. <laughs> it's like freaking ridiculous. But yeah, there, were, there was a nice uh, German camera that would have taken 35 millimeter. No, it would have taken, uh, same as this guy, 610, I wanna say, or 620. Um, yeah, would have taken 620 film. It was like a more traditional looking camera. Um, and there was a, uh, another Kodak that was a large format or medium format, uh, like a 620 or 120. But the uh, whole, it had a telescopic uh, lens sort of thing, like an old billows almost. Like it was, it looks like a cross between an old camera when you think about the ones with the billows and like the cloak that goes over you and a modern like point and, like point and shoot sort of thing. Um, but the billows were jammed up and it looked like it had been through some pretty rough things. There were parts falling out of it when I took it off the shelf and yeah. And there was also a 110 camera, but it was just kind of like a little dinky one that I didn't really, it didn't do anything for me. I, I like my cameras to have personality and these I would definitely say have 
their own personalities. And I hope that with some restoration, I can really return a lot of that personality to it. So if you have any uh, tips or tricks about thrifting, make sure you let us know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you're not subscribed, we really do appreciate your subscription. Uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway for some stuff in the near future to celebrate hitting the 100 subscriber mark. And other than that, uh, we post regular content on Mondays, bonus content on Thursdays, and if you're not having a great day, I hope you have a great day. Bye for now. So, uh, just as a stinger here, here is my entire, well, almost entire uh, thrift store collection of cameras to date. There's a few missing that are in storage because we didn't have space for them. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna have space for all of them now, but we'll figure that out when we get to it. Um, yeah, let me know if you think I need more cameras.